It's a real pleasure. Conferences are back. Real people? <laughs> Great. So we, we're going to speak about machine learning, but from a very specific point of view, from the point of view of a developer who's not necessarily uh, an expert in machine learning. Um, quick introduction, so maybe you could guess by my accent. Uh, I'm French. Uh, I live in Paris. My name is Laurent. You can follow me on Twitter if you'd like. Um, I joined Google Cloud five years ago. I'm a developer advocate, and before that, I, work, I was an ebook pioneer. I worked for 17 years uh, in the ebook industry. So, for instance, in 2000, we made uh, one of the first ebook devices in the world, one of the three first. Uh, it was a, like an iPad, but before the iPad, and then the Kindle before the Kindle. Okay. Um, I love to start with this quote from Clark, which I, I really like. Um, because it does represent what I feel still after a few years uh, when I see something new develop with machine learning. It really looks like magic. But we, are, we all have a background in technology. If we scratch a little bit the surface, this is just technology, right? Uh, no magic. Um, my own definition of machine learning is a bit weird, but this is how um, I used it for the past years. We have data, that's the input, and we want to understand what this data is about, what is into, uh, in, into this data. And for that, machine learning lets us, lets us extract information. Okay? Of course, the real definition of machine learning is that it's a subset of AI, and within machine learning, deep learning that deals with neural networks is the field that has brought lots of innovations recently. So how, do, how does it work? Um, decades ago, researchers have tried to mimic the way we think our brain works. For that, we use examples, real-life examples. That's a lot how we learn, right, from examples. And the magic there is that we manage to solve problems, problems that we couldn't solve before or barely. So if we have a look at how you can benefit from machine learning today, whichever your, your background, your expertise, of course, you can invest, invest time into developing machine learning expertise. You can become an expert. You can deal with neural networks. But if you prefer to develop applications, maybe you, you don't have the time to, to invest time um, into machine learning, you can still develop uh, lots of stuff, uh, cool stuff, with existing uh, machine learning models. So they have been trained on many uh, examples, sometimes millions of examples, and they are ready to use. And in between, uh, as you see, sometimes uh, you won't be able to find um, a machine learning models, a model that works for you. And for a few years, AutoML techniques let you do that yourself. You can build customized models uh, with, still without any expertise. And so that's the, the goal of my uh, talk today, is to give you many examples of what you can do as a developer, or even a, as an expert, because sometimes if you're an expert, you don't need to reinvent the, real, the wheel, right? Uh, sometimes uh, existing models will do better than what you would do from scratch. Uh, and maybe if you're an expert, it's best to focus on innovation, on developing added value, okay? So let's start with uh, examples of machine learning models that you can use right away. If you remember my definition, um, you have data. And this data can be anything, almost anything, text, pictures, videos, and speech. So those are Google Cloud products, but what I'm going to show you is mainly generic. Okay? And from text, images, videos, you can extract information. And sometimes the information that you want is actually your input data in some other intelligible uh, form, okay? So I love uh, the vision models for personal reasons, because when I was a student, so a long time ago in the 90s, um, my teachers and, uh, and us, we were trying to, to understand, to detect what was in a picture. And at the time, we would use convolution filters to get the edges in a picture, and maybe here we would be able to detect that there were flowers in this picture, but then as soon as we would use different pictures, it would fail. So that, that was a lot of frustration. And machine learning here is solving that kind of problem. 
So first, a vision model is able to describe you a picture with labels. Okay, so this, that's perfectly correct. This picture is about nature, flower, and so on. You'll notice you get a score, um, like a percentage between zero and one. It's a confidence score to have a hint about how confident the model is about the result. So it's very important because uh, machine learning models are not perfect. Like us, they make mistakes. And sometimes they will give you uh, uh, results that are very good, um, but you, you will deal with, with the confidence score to maybe um, be more careful about uh, what you're doing with the results. More precisely, uh, vision models can detect objects. So here it's the cast of the Lord of the Rings movies um, uh, in a restaurant, and the vision model tells me that they are persons, so you see the big bounding boxes here. Even the small person in the background is detected. It's even able to detect the tops, the pants, so the T-shirts here, and the ceiling lamp here. Okay? So that's very easy to use, and still you have confidence scores. Um, if you uh, zoom in, uh, it can detect faces. So um, here it's a 3D rendition of Gollum. So it's not a real human face. Gollum was human. It's also a 3D rendition. But the vision model is able to tell me, OK, it, it's a face. Uh, here are the bonding boxes if you want to do a close-up. And I even get the location of the eyes, the nose, and everything. And also, a vision model can try to detect emotions. So here, what I get is that likely this face is angry, but Gollum is always angry, right? So I'm kind of cheating here. You have lots of other features like uh, uh, what's the position of the head in 3D, uh, what's the depth of the nose, and so on. Uh, so you, ca you can work with that. Another field that has been fully solved uh, thanks to machine learning, that's OCR, text detection. Um, and so here it's a screenshot, right? Uh, it's only pixels, it's not text, and a vision model is able to give me the text. So here it's perfect, there, there, there's no mistake, because printed text is, um, you know, there are not... Uh, thousands of different fonts that are used. So here it works really well. But you get some uh, level of structure. So here you get three blocks in green. You get the different sentences, the different words, and even you can go down to the uh, symbol level. Okay, So kind of boring, problem solved. But keep in mind, um, machine learning models can make mistakes. So you always have to have in the, in the back of your head that there are limits. So I always try to find those limits. So here, it's the same screenshot with a perspective effect. And a few months ago, it would make a mistake. It doesn't make any mistake anymore, so boring again. So here, I, I get the same result. Um, a few months ago, it would give me a, a single quote here instead of a double quote. So what's nice is that uh, models evolve over time. They improve. So another problem that's a lot harder, it's handwriting detection. So like OCR, but on handwriting. And uh, each of our handwritings is unique, right? So here it's a, a sheet of paper written by Tolkien. Um, and the, the result that I get is the following. It's uh, very good. It's exactly uh, what I would expect. Um, but two weeks ago, I was showing the same example. And it was making one mistake. It was here. Uh, it would give me Elven Kings instead of Elven Kings. Uh, so, once again, the model has improved, so no, now I cannot give you uh, this counter example. But keep in mind that it's not perfect, so here, for instance, the limit here is that this double quote is not detected, because kind of this one is, but this one is really outside, it's like design, right? Uh, it's a nice thing. So maybe in a future evolution, it's going to be able to detect that this double quote is really part of the sentence, and so on. Okay, and also a vision model is able to do image matching, right? Detect images that look the same and so can deduce uh, maybe what's in the picture. So to try that out, uh, so that we call that web entity detection. Web entities are famous um, objects or famous persons uh, that everyone knows or that have a Wikipedia page, for instance. And so here, I took a unique picture of Tolkien. I had never seen it before, so I did a quite some search. I zoomed into the picture, cropped it, applied the color filter, so this picture is unique. It has never, it, it's derived from an existing one, but it's unique. 
And I was surprised by the result because it's telling me that likely this picture is about uh, Tolkien. So it does, it does work. And I get, I get the reason if, um, if I uh, analyze the results. It's telling me that there's a partial matching image coming from here, and that's actually the Spanish newspaper I used, or I read and I found this picture in, the, in uh, this Spanish article. And so I get this description. This picture is mainly uh, G.R.R. Tolkien, but what's super cool is that I get a unique identifier here. So it means, as a developer, I can work with IDs and not with text. Text, you know, there are different forms. Um, Tolkien doesn't have a pseudonym, but there can be, be different ways to, to name people or, or objects. Right? And uh, at the end, I also get different um, uh, lists of match, partial matching images. Like, so it means you can... Uh, you, you have pictures of uh, a man or a woman against a tree or people in a forest. Some companies are using that to detect copyright infringement, to know where their images have been used or derived. I told you it's an, uh, it's an API, so you can do REST requests or RPC requests, but there are also uh, client libraries, uh, open source, these ones, um, and so it means you can use uh, your preferred language. So, my examples are in Python. I'm sorry if there are many uh, Java developers. Um, it's always the same principle. You create a client, so it's a wrapper around the, uh, the API. You provide the content here, an image, and you call uh, what you're interested in doing, face detection, for instance, and you have the results right away. So what I love here is that in a few lines, you don't think about the machine learning model, but you can focus on the results. So you, you can deal immediately with, with the results in, in the same scope. We will do a demo, an interactive demo, in the second part. Um, uh, so if you have a smartphone, um, keep it connected, OK? So we've seen what, what mainly you can do with uh, vision models you can extrapolate that to video models. You can do the same on videos. Um, but the difference is that you have one more dimension. You have time, OK? So maybe it's easier that I show you uh, this demo. So here, it's a video that has been analyzed by the video model. And I have the JSON uh, results. And here, I can see all the information that has been extracted. So first, there's the video shot detection. So those are all the different sequences inside the video that have been detected, so like, uh, sequences that you can actually cut out of the video as independent parts. Uh, they're pretty small, three seconds, two seconds. Um, and like in the pictures before, uh, you can get labels. So you can see that there is a bridge at the beginning. You see. And so here, there's a bridge in the picture, but actually it's also detected as an object. But you have one more dimension, time, so it means you can track the different objects. They each have an ID inside the results, and so here you see the result. Okay? So buildings, the bridge is really tracked, and you can do the same with um, persons. You see, you get the skeleton of the, of the different people. Uh, you can go to the uh, face level also. Uh, you can detect famous uh, logos. You can do uh, text detection. Uh, so there's a lot of text in this video. Um, let's have a look at this one. OK, there's a lot of text here. So, but you see, the text in this map is tracked also. Um, you can also uh, ask whether the content in this video is safe or not. So that lets you filter out videos that could be uh, borderline. OK? So once again, very easy to use as a developer. Um, on my GitHub, oh, oh, for, oh, I forgot to tell you, I will give you one link at the end, only one link to run the, to run them all. Um, you will have all the different links that are here. So you can stay with me, don't take snapshots all the time. Uh, I will give you one link, and you will have everything. Uh, so on my uh, GitHub repo, um, there's uh, this uh, small application that actually extracts, uh, generate uh, GIF animations out of videos. Uh, for the detected objects, OK? The first field, actually, so I, I've shown you uh, images and videos, but the first field uh, researchers have worked on is text. Um, it's a big field called NLP, Natural Language Processing. And of course, there are NL mo uh, models. 
And so the input is text this time. So if I give this um, sentence, but it works at, you can give a full article, you can give uh, chapters, paragraphs. Um, if I give this sentence, so first it tells me that it's English, okay. So that's easy to guess with statistical analysis, but I get a precise uh, syntax analysis of the sentence, uh, including punctuation and lemmas, lemmas the canonical form of uh, verbs and nouns can be useful in some cases. Um, but like in pictures, you can detect entities. So here there are three types of entities in red persons. Uh, Tolkien is a person, a writer is a person, and so on. And here, there is, here is the result for Tolkien. Um, and I was surprised because here I am getting the same ID as before for Tolkien in the picture. So it means you can work with the same identifiers in text, pictures, and videos for the same entities. Uh, British is uh, mapped to a location related to United Kingdom, and the three books at the end are each detected as a work of art. That is uh, great. You can also classify content. So that's used by uh, news, um, um, news companies, for instance. They, companies that are here for over uh, a century, uh, that have been here for over a century, they have archives of papers. Uh, so if they scan them, if they do an OCR pass, um, then they have text, and they can ask an NL model to classify automatically the content. And here what I get is that it should be classified under books and literature at 97%. That is perfect. And like in pictures before, it can also do sentiment analysis. So to try that out, I use two uh, reviews of The Hobbit, a negative one and a positive one. And I, what I get are scores between minus one and plus one, of course. The negative ones do come from the negative review, those ones from the positive review, and there are many other neutral sentences, of course, because most of the time we are more nuanced, so the results are around zero. Okay. This is used by companies to detect, for instance, analyze reviews. So, of course, they get an average score when a customer says, okay, uh, your service is one star, your service is five star, they get an average course, but if you want to go into the details, it's not all black and white. Sometimes there are subtleties, okay, you are good at doing that, bad at doing that. You Some companies are analyzing the reviews and they can go down to the level of entities. They know that they've been good at this service, they, they, they know they're bad at something else, okay? Um, I know uh, one company in the UK who is using that to analyze customer emails. And what they do is that whenever they have a negative email, they treat it in priority. That's pretty clever. They are more efficient to deal with problems. Still very easy to use uh, in, in, in code. Um, another one, um, another machine learning model dealing uh, with text, it's uh, actually Google Translate as an API. So I, I'm going to try it anyway. Is there anyone who has never used Google Translate? Uh, I ask because I've never met anyone. No? Okay, so I will keep trying. Uh, so I will, uh, you've, you know what it is. Um, I will share one uh, anecdote with you. So s almost six years ago, I was not working uh, with Google. I was in my own company, and I was using uh, Google Translate um, to translate Chinese and Japanese document into French or English. And it was working okay, but you could tell that it was a machine translation. And what happened is one day, the results uh, were a lot better. So all the, all the best. Uh, I, I kept using it uh, even more. Um, and what I learned is that actually this day, the Google Translate team switched from a statistical, we, call, we can call it statistical model, to a machine learning model. And those are the big gaps, big, I mean, it's like a decibel scale, big quality gaps you can see in green here. And so there are explanation, research paper about it. But as a user, I could feel it. Suddenly, it was a, an average machine translation and then a very good one. And since, since then, it just kept improving because uh, there are improvements uh, in, in, in the way the, the, the models are designed. Um, and also, they keep being trained on more and more data. But what's interesting also is that now the models are able to work on uh, less, they, they are going to be trained, uh, they are able to be trained on, with less data. So for instance, 
There are some languages that are more uh, verbal than written, and you will have very little text, right? And so, uh, so those are, so you see there's a big quality gap still, but here you can do um, translation on some languages that are, uh, have the same results at, as six years ago. Okay? Uh, you just need two lines here. You create a client and you call translate. The two last existing uh, machine learning models that you can use uh, and that deal with uh, speech are the speech, speech to text and text to speech. So there are been engines, uh, TTS, STT engines for decades. Uh, I'm pretty sure you remember uh, calling your bank a few years ago and saying, okay, I want an advisor. Advisor, please, I want an... It didn't work. It wasn't able to understand you because it was made on, it was built, designed on phonemes, and we all have different voices and so on. So here again, machine learning is solving that problem. It's obvious today because we all speak to assistants on our smartphones or at home. We can speak to an assistant. Our voice is transcribed into text. The text is actually analyzed by the NL model before. Um, and then you can even have an answer back. Uh, the challenge is, so it works in real time. It didn't, it used, it didn't used to, <laughs> to work. You had to wait uh, seconds before. And the nice outcome of machine learning models is they are trained on real-life examples, and there's noise in real-life examples. Uh, if I speak on my phone, uh, my kids are around, there's noise, or a car is driving by. Uh, and the, the nice outcome is the, the, the final model is robust to noise, and that's why it works so well today. Keep in mind that if you can understand what you have in your data, then you can index it. So it means companies who have hundreds of hours of speech can actually index that and look for any word um, and search for a word and go directly to the right location. Okay? I, I did this tutorial. I recorded myself um, reciting French poetry, Maître Corbeau sur un arbre perché. Uh, it's pretty hard, but it works. Uh, so it's transcribing everything correctly. And it's even trying to give me a punctuation. I ask for punctuation. It's very hard. Um, you have that kind of feature now, uh, for instance, on YouTube, I think. Um, you can ask for subtitles, even though they have not been uh, written by, by the authors. Uh, so you can have live um, uh, speech to text, uh, and you can see that as subtitles. And so. Uh, you, before, you had no punctuation, and I think you, we are rolling out now uh, punctuation. Um, okay, um, the last one, so you can uh, answer, uh, you can hear and answer a very human-like answer with a speech, uh, text-to-speech uh, model. And um, in our company, so the technology is called, is called WaveNet and has been developed by DeepMind. You know them? They have beaten the world champion for the Go game a few years ago. Then uh, gamers are StarCraft, so they know how to learn from scratch and build uh, very nice uh, machine learning models. There are research papers also, if you're interested here. Um, one challenge is uh, real-time, so it's doing better than real-time. In one second, you can generate 20 seconds of speech. Let's, uh, let's do a quick demo. Um, Okay, I'm going to go on a search engine, a new one. Nobody knows. Uh, okay, sorry. This one. Okay, I'm going to go in English. I don't speak Polish. Um, and I'm going to speak English with my thick French accent, okay? Um, maybe you didn't notice. You can do a vocal search, of course. Uh, okay. What is the température in Paris? It's 23 degrees in Paris right now. So that's exactly uh, the two models, actually the three models. So the first one, in real time, you have an answer. Uh, of course, I, I didn't see what was the result when I started uh, pronouncing temperature, but you, you can do prefetching. You, you have uh, live results. Of course, the best result is when the, the sentence is pronounced. Um, you heard the result, so that's a WaveNet voice. All the Google Assistant voices are WaveNet voices. And um, 
Um, what I wanted to show you is that if I, w I were to do that um, in London, for instance, with someone from London would say, uh, pardon me, uh, can you repeat? Because they don't have the context. They don't know I'm French. They don't know I have a bad accent and so on. So most probably I would have to repeat, maybe slowly. And, and so here, the, the machine learning model got it the first time. It works in all, all, all languages, of course, it can make mistakes, um, but uh, it works in different languages. So somehow, um, the, the speech-to-text model has understood what is the, 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 the essence of, of human speech. Okay. Okay, this is another tutorial. Um, so now, you've seen, what, you've seen examples of what you can do as a developer. You can use lots of different uh, smart features. But sometimes, uh, sometime in, in your company, it will not work because you will have more specific use cases. And this is where maybe AutoML te techniques can help you. Okay? So let me give you that example. Um, if I take these two pictures and give them to the vision model we, we've seen before, I get almost the same results. Because basically, those are sky, uh, clouds in a sky, right? So the existing models are generic ones. But if I want to build uh, a weather forecasting application, I need, for instance, to be able to detect the shape. Here it's a Cyrus, here it's an Alto Cumulus. And so here I'm stuck. But you can use AutoML to build your own customized model. How does it work? Here you need to work a little bit more than before. It's not just an API. The work you need to provide is you need to build your own data set. You need to provide the examples, actually. And then everything else is automated. What's interesting, uh, you have many options. Um, you can launch a cloud training, so you will have the state of the art, the biggest uh, machine, biggest. It's a large model, but you will have the highest possible accuracy with a cloud model. But you can also launch an edge training. And an edge training is a smaller model that you can export. And if it's exported, it means it can run on a Raspberry Pi in a container. It can work on an iOS or Android app uh, with a TensorFlow Lite export. But also, and I tried it, um, you can actually do also a TensorFlow JS export and run predict in a web page. I'm going to show you an example a bit later. Um, so, you need to build a data set, and in our problem, we want to detect some specific shapes of clouds. So, you need pictures of, uh, of clouds. And the only thing you need here, so it's a simple problem of image classification, you provide a label for each picture. If you wanted to detect different um, uh, features in one picture, you could also uh, provide different um, uh, labels. You don't need thousands of examples. It starts to work with 100 pictures, 100 pictures, sorry, for each label. Here, in my data set, I have roughly a little bit more than 200 pictures uh, on average for each label. And then you can launch the training. It's fully automated. So what I did here, it's an iterative process. By experience, this is my experience. I think it's pretty uh, the one for everyone. So I launch a quick training to get a sense of how well the model is doing. And then I saw the results, so 84% uh, of precision, and I could see that there were issues in my data set. So I went back to my data set, I fixed a few labels, and launched a new training, a longer one also, and now I have a, a model that is able to detect clouds, the clouds I want, at 90% of precision. Here is the, the kind of tool uh, that's useful to, to know how well your model is doing. So here, this is a conf confusion matrix. So here I know I'm doing well with most clouds, but here with the Alto Cumulus, almost half of the time I'm wrong. So it means there's an issue, and if I go back to my data set, there are two issues. So first, I have a lot less pictures of the Alto Cumulus in my data set, so the data set is not balanced. But that's not the main issue. The main issue is that I think I have 135 uh, pictures, but most of them have, have been extracted, extracted from a video. So it means it's one picture, then the next picture, one, 
100 milliseconds later. So it's almost the same pictures. So it does not bring any information for the machine learning model. It doesn't, doesn't add any information. So it doesn't learn much from this picture. So it just means I need to collect more um, rep representative uh, examples and improve my model. It's actually a picture. So I have now a cloud model. It means you can use, use it in two ways. So the first one, you can uh, serve uh, your model, and you have an API that you can call and do live, um, live predictions. So that's what I, I did here. I uploaded it. I think it's from Krakow, maybe from five years ago. Is it Krakow? Do you recognize it? I know it's from Poland. OK. Sorry? Yeah, so it's a picture I took here uh, five years ago. <laughs> um, and so if I uh, input uh, this picture to my model, um, it's telling me that it's a cumulus at 97%, and that's great. But I can also use my model uh, with batch processing. If I have many pictures I want to analyze, I, just, I don't uh, expose an API, but I launch a batch process request. Okay? So I showed you, uh, again, an example on pictures but it works on other uh, data. So images, videos, text, and structured data. You can also build um, custom models on databases, CSVs, everything that is tabular. If you have rows and columns and you want to predict a column, it works also now uh, thanks to AutoML techniques. Uh, so those are the different problems that you can solve today. Maybe it's easier to see them. They have been regrouped in a big AI platform that is available for experts, but also for developers. And so those are the AutoML features. So the one we saw is image classification. We're able to say, OK, this picture is about this kind of cloud, or we could also predict uh, something else. You can um, detect your own custom objects uh, in pictures, and you can even go down to the level of uh, the pixel. So it means you can say, OK, I want to I know that this pixel, does it belong to one object or to the background? Uh, it's used by companies to analyze um, um, satellite images to uh, compute um, uh, areas, because they can count the pixels right of specific. You want to detect planes or whatever. Um, you can uh, go to the pixel level. It works also on videos, so you can classify videos, you can detect specific actions in videos, and you can do your own custom object tracking um, model, and so on and so on. Um, it's been, so AutoML started, let's say, four years ago, um, and it's just the beginning again, but there are more and more features, um, and, and it's pretty fun. So it's demo time. You can take your phones, we're gonna use, we're gonna test the vision model and my own uh, AutoML model. So I did a model that doesn't exist because it's not very useful. But I took pictures of my colleagues uh, and also of uh, um, the first conferences, um, and from selfies I classified pictures with people with the tongue out, people yawning, and people sleeping. So if someone is sleeping here. Don't wake the person, but you'll take a picture. Um, yeah, uh, by the way, it's recorded. It's, we might see you on the screen. So please participate to the demo. But if you don't see, want to see you, you will be slightly anonymized. Um, here is uh, how it's going to work. So from your smartphone, you're going to uh, be able to take a selfie, send it to me. Um, it's going to uh, trigger a small Python code, a cloud function call the Vision API to make sure there's a face. If you take a picture of your foot, it will not work, but you can try. Uh, and then we will try uh, the, the two different models, the generic one and my own one. And then you'll see the result on your smartphone, so you will know whether it's working or not. And then we will have a, a quick look at all the results uh, in a second time. OK? So let's uh, start the demo. It's serverless. OK, it started. So you can uh, flash this QR code, or you can type um, the URL, bit.ly slash dvplml22, DevOps Poland Machine Learning 22. Uh, it's easier with the QR code. I'll give you some time so that most of you can join. 
Yeah? Do you need more time? Is it okay? Yeah, you've started. Now you can already use it, okay? Okay. And so I'm going to show you to everyone how it works in, in live. So you can try to trigger uh, any emotion. Okay, so the selfie is uploaded. Okay, I'm surprised. And as I have the position of the eyes, the nose and the mouth, I can know the orientation of the face, and I can add a mustache to everyone, right? So my father has a mustache, and so this demo is just to know if I look like my father <laughs> with a mustache. Okay, uh, second one. Uh, Okay, so it's a generic model. Okay, it works. Uh, it's harder to detect sadness uh, and uh, angriness. Um, maybe you, tr you try that. Um, now let's switch to my, my own little uh, model. And this time, so you can try that also. Uh, this time, you can uh, stick out your tongue, uh, you can yawn, and you can sleep in different ways. So I try that. So. So here, there's not much light, but it works. So if you want to help improve my model, you can do that. Let's uh, I'm using the colors of the Polish flag for the AutoML mode, so you should uh, be able to make the difference. And let's try to, if you have a neighbor sleeping. OK, it works. So, but you could say that I cheat. I'm cheating. Why? Because this is my own model, so I use pictures of myself, right? So I'm kind of cheating, uh, not on purpose, but if I get, I'm getting good results, maybe there are reasons. It's because I'm reusing a very similar samples. So let's uh, check that out. So first, wow, OK. Thanks for your participation. Great. Uh, but the Wi-Fi is good, so that's OK. Uh, happy people, yeah. Uh, Slightly, uh, yeah, my, so I don't see a wrong answer. So true positives, surprise people, yes, it works. So here you, you didn't know, baby. Oh, yeah, you tried, but we were still in the first mood. So uh, you're not really surprised. So we could say it's a false positive, but then I'm not showing the, the confidence scores. Uh, it has worked. Uh, sad, yeah, a bit sad and a bit angry. Oh, yeah, you're sad. So here, we were still in the first mood. Yeah, you're not really angry, I would say. Uh, okay, but now the auto email mode. So people with the tongue out. So someone tried to cheat. So you're <laughs> sleeping with the tongue out. <laughs> so it works, you have the tongue out. Uh, then. Uh, I, I'm not showing the, 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 the score for the other one, but you are over 50% of uh, having the tongue out. So it, do, it does work, you see? Uh, even with the uh, weird shapes of tongues, it works. Uh, people yawning, yes. With or without the hand, it works. And people sleeping, yes, 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 yes. It does. Uh, here you have uh, slightly the eyes open, but I don't know, maybe you open them uh, a little bit. So we can say it works at over 90 or maybe uh, almost 95% of accuracy. Uh, and of course, we can detect objects. So here, uh, I can tell you who has glasses. We welcome to the stash club of people with glasses, additionally. So you see, it, it, it does work. Um, to um, give you a sense of the demo uh, is online. Actually, uh, you you can uh, it's on my uh, on my GitHub repo. Uh, here's the code, the, the cloud function. That's it. The, the first one. Um, whenever there's a selfie uploaded, so I'm saying, okay, I want I want to do face detection. I want to detect objects. So for uh, the glasses, for instance, uh, if there's a zombie in the room, I want to be alarmed and then feel blur the the, the zombie picture maybe. Uh, that's it, and uh, then I call uh, annotate image, and I have re the results, and then in my uh, other function, I add the mustache to everyone. Okay, so you see, wh what I love is that we can focus focus on on what's important, uh, developing uh, cool applications uh, that work with uh, smart results. Under the hood, how does it work? There are three uh, main techniques. So this one is very specific to Google. We call that meta learning. Before launching the real training, we actually <laughs> do a lot of lots of tra different trainings 
uh, under the hood um, to decide on the best architecture, the one that will converge faster and the one that will provide better results. Okay? Then the core technique that is known to, by the experts is called transfer learning. So here, for instance, that's the vision model that is able to say, okay, I have a cloud in the sky. When you provide uh, new features and you launch an additional training, you are building additional layers here in the neural network, and your model gets specialized, benefits from everything that the model knows, textures and objects and so on, but here is able to uh, get customized to your own needs. There's also something uh, known to experts, uh, hyperparameters are now automatically uh, fine-tuned. Uh, here's a demo. So uh, during uh, COVID in my home, uh, maybe we stayed uh, almost all of us uh, two years at home. So uh, I did, a, uh, so this is a small data set of electronic boards, uh, 100 of them only. And uh, if you remember, I told you I worked 17 years in the ebook industry, so I uh, developed uh, nine generations of ebook devices. Um, and so I had to deal with uh, electronic boards. And there were quality issues in the factory and so on. So now I, I would have the solution to, to deal with that. So I took 100 pictures of electronic boards, and in them, inside them I, um, um, I uh, selected the areas that I, uh, I want to detect. So the ICs, the integrated circuits here. Then I launched a training, but an edge model, an edge training. And now I have a, a model that I, I can use anywhere. So this is my setup at home. So it's a webcam that is able to do a nice autofocus. And here is the result. So it runs in a web page. That's what's pretty cool. So in JavaScript, you import the TensorFlow package. You give the link to the model that you have. So it, it gets downloaded. But then everything works in real time. Here, so I'm recording on my laptop, but it's still able to do between four and five predictions per second, so detections uh, on, on uh, the different frames. And so here, um, in the right orientation, you see that I am almost detecting everything, and I barely did, maybe it's not my first training, maybe the second one. So I already have excellent results. Um, Keep in mind, it's never perfect. So here, for instance, this one is not detected. I think that's because of the shadows. So most of my pictures were in a sunny, uh, I took them in a sunny, uh, or I reused them so they are very um, well uh, lit. But at home, uh, I did that, it was pretty late. So they are shadows, and I think here it's because of the shadows that this one is not detected. So what does it mean? Either I need to improve my data set and provide this example here, say, this should be detected, or also I need to, cal to control my environment. So in a factory, I would need to always have the same lightning uh, condition, right? Uh, another uh, case here, uh, so here it's um, uh, false negative, so it's not detected. Uh, I think it's because it's hidden by the, the condensator here. So I need to provide maybe in my data set this example to say, okay, sometimes the ICs will be hidden, okay? So keep in mind that that's the kind of, but the, the model here is only 10 megabytes. It gets downloaded and then you can shut off uh, the network, right? It can work uh, anywhere, offline, in real time. You have everything uh, embedded. Okay, um, okay, let's go on. So we've seen what you can do as a developer with existing models. We've seen that you can build your own models, but you can also become an expert. You can do more machine learning. Alors you, uh, sorry, you can do, um, there was a French word <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Uh, so uh, you can uh, do more machine learning in two ways. Uh, you can uh, focus on verticals, uh, so work on specific domains, and sometimes you will find uh, platforms for that and then you can also build your own neural network. So um, in uh, my company, the, 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 the AI uh, platform is called Vertex AI. So you've seen that you can do uh, your own uh, custom models, but of course you can do everything as an expert. You can uh, deploy, uh, manage uh, machine learning pipelines and so on. 
Um, in many companies, and this is pretty new, I would say it's one, two uh, years away now, uh, you can analyze documents. So it's built on top of the, the great OCR. So OCR, OCR is problem solved. But uh, if you go one uh, level above, you can also now analyze documents. You can get the structure of documents. And so it means, for instance, you can analyze receipts, you can analyze invoices. Uh, you can uh, detect tables or forms uh, in documents. You, then uh, you can also, so it's been uh, available for many years, uh, you can build your own chatbots with dialogue flow and more and more and more. Okay, so let me give you this example. So I asked my wife and kids to fill out uh, a form, a small form. So this is my wife's handwriting and my kids. And I asked Document AI to analyze uh, this picture. So it's actually uh, four documents, but I gather them in uh, the same picture. And what I get is, of course, the OCR works. The handwriting is detected, detecting everything perfectly. Uh, even my son's handwriting, which is okay. <laughs> uh, so here it works perfectly. Of course, I, I, I took the, 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 the best example. Sometimes it, it makes mistakes. Um, but the interesting thing is that additionally to that, I'm getting a level of structure. So for instance, um, the form parser here is telling me that here this is a key, question is a key, and uh, what is the, is the value. And I have a second one here, answer is another. So I get key value pairs, um, and it does detect that it's a form. So it means you can take any form, uh, where, wherever is position, position uh, the, the caption, the key, uh, it will try to detect it, and so you can do a lot of stuff uh, with that. Uh, for my wife, with a teacher, I tried uh, to autocorrect some papers, some exam papers. Um, uh, likewise, there are pro uh, parsers that are able to analyze um, identity documents. So here is a, a French uh, national identity documents. The European one are going to convert, so we are all go going to have... They are all, Almost, they are already very close, but uh, in the future we're all uh, going to have uh, European ID cards that, that have the same fields and so on. But here it works already on, on many different uh, uh, fields, and I try that. So this is a demo that I built. It's uh, not on my GitHub repo, it's on Google's, um, but you, you can actually take your ID, put it on, on in front of the, the webcam, and it does recognize the different fields. So it means here that it auto-fields uh, the form, the identity form. Um, yeah, there's also uh, an article that I, I wrote about it. If you, wanna if you want to uh, invest more time into machine learning and become an expert, there are, as of today, two main frameworks, TensorFlow and PyTorch. Uh, I kept the slide behind. Uh, it's from four years ago. It was to show you how well uh, TensorFlow was doing. So now, if you pick up TensorFlow or, or PyTorch, uh, you can't be wrong, okay? But they are converging. They have the, the same level of, of features. Okay, time to wrap up. So what have we seen? You can build uh, smarter solutions in different ways. Uh, the time that you need um, as a developer to use existing models is ours. The, de the first demo I did with, to add the mustache to detect faces, I did it in one afternoon. Um, and then for my prototype, um, the demo that we did um, to detect people with the tongue out and so on, it took me uh, uh, four half days. So it took me two days to build uh, the data set. Then the training is just a matter of hours. Okay, of course, if you wanna uh, become an expert, you need to invest weeks and most probably years. If I was younger, I would spend 100% of my time. The difficulty, uh, there's no difficulty at all for, uh, to use uh, machine learning APIs. For AutoML, the difficulty is the data set. If you provide a, an average data set or a bad data set, it's not magic, right? The, the, the AutoML uh, training will be as good as your data set. Okay? So I think that making a data set is, is like an art. You, you need to think uh, qualita qualitatively, right? It's very hard. You need, you need to, to, to bring up the, the examples and so on. Of course, uh, as an expert, the difficulty is everywhere. You need to handle everything, but you have cloud tools uh, to help you with. 
Uh, here are a few tutorials or articles I've written. So on my GitHub, for instance, if you're interested uh, how to summarize automatically a video uh, in a GIF, how to build GIFs out of objects, how to add a mustache to someone. Uh, here, this is the, the form, uh, the identity form um, uh, demo, and, and there's more. Okay, um, Google AI also has made a comic book um, uh, that if you want to refresh your memories, um, I invite you, I, I read it once a year. Uh, it's really great. That's, fi that's it for me. Uh, I hope you learn a couple of things. My grail is that I gave you IDs, so feel free to ping me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Come back to me if you have questions. Um, that's really my, my great. Uh, I, I think you learned something, but if, you, if I gave you ideas, uh, that's all the best. Uh, I wish you a very nice conference. Uh, I'm going to stay around uh, if you have questions, uh, and also I'll be at the Google booth, booth for a couple of hours. Thanks a lot for having me today. Have fun, have a great conference. Thank you. Thank you.